Hello my YouTube friends. In today's video we're going to watch an interesting video related to solar energy. I have ordered a solar energy kit that includes a solar cell a panel as well as an inverter and its respective controller. It's completely portable and adaptable to any location. Let's take a look. Now they sent me this straight from Banggood. So let's see what they brought us here. This is everything we have. Let's look at its main element. A solar cell that measures 36 by 32 centimeters but beyond being a common cell we'll notice that it has two usb output ports as well as a 12 volt output port that serves to charge the batteries this cell in itself can provide us up to 40 watts approximately, according to the specifications that it has. It's very lightweight, and with this equipment alone, you can already charge a mobile phone, uh, perhaps operate a, a camera, as we will see shortly, without using the, the battery. We can film for as long as there is sunlight, as long as we, as we need, without using the battery directly. Let's see what we have here. This is the solar charge controller. It's fully automatic, and it also comes with its manual, which is short, but has all the necessary information for us to connect it and use our equipment properly. This solar charger has one one input and two outputs. With this plug here, as indicated here, we connect it from the solar panel. We will connect it shortly. You can clearly see how to do it here. And with this other output for 12 volts, we go directly to the battery for charging. Then we have one more output. It serves for a 12 volt light. This, uh, this output, in case of having solar energy directly, can keep the light on with the cell and if not with the connected battery when it's charging. We have both options. We can turn it on through these inputs here with a connected battery and when we uh, have energy coming directly from the sun it passes straight through. It's functioning directly with the solar energy and if it's enough the light will remain on and if it's not enough it uses the battery and it's entirely automatic. As you can see here, it has controls for time and all these indications are in the instruction manual. I won't go into much detail. And it also has two USB outputs, providing 5.2 volts from here as well. Even if the solar cell is not connected, is not connected. Um, with a battery, we will still have 5 volts here to uh, charge our phone or our camera direct directly from here or use it directly as a power source. As I mentioned, this is a complete kit as it can charge batteries, be used directly or even with a battery not included with this particular kit. We also have an inverter here which the manufacturers claim to be 2000 watts. But I have my doubts because 2000 watts would be 10 amperes, but we'll test it and see if this inverter is truly that powerful. This inverter comes connected directly to the battery. If we didn't have the solar cell, we would have the battery. And we find we have a 220 volt AC output right there. A point to bear in mind as well, is that uh, the waveform coming out of this inverter is a modified sine wave, not a pure sine wave. This is something to consider because it makes a difference. Sometimes there's a little less interference 
And the waveform it provides is slightly truncated. It's not a smooth sine wave like a pure sine wave. But we'll see with the oscilloscope what it delivers exactly. Here we have two uh, connections used for the battery. In essence, when we want to have uh, 220 volts from a battery. And we also have uh, charging clamps for the battery. Then we have a connector for the car's cigarette lighter right here, meaning we can pass from the solar panel directly to the car's cigarette lighter and charge our car's battery, even in a direct manner without going through the controller or by going through the controller directly. And here we have another cable that we can connect to the car's cigarette lighter and plug it directly here to have 220 volts within the car itself. Suppose we want to use something that requires AC power, 220 volts. Now let's connect all of the accessories. And But before that, before connecting, let's test this solar cell outdoors, in the middle of the field, outdoors, to see what the solar panel can do by itself, without a battery, without an inverter, and without a controller. If you join me now, let's go. But before any of that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, follow me on my social media, and activate the bell so that YouTube notifies you when we upload new, new videos. Here I am getting out of the car itself, and I place the panel on the windshield, and I move the cable to the inside of the car to charge my phone. I connect it, and you'll see that it starts charging automatically. And it's at 41 slash 42% and it's charging. So it works very well for charging the phone. Now we are going to turn on a 12 volt, seven watt LED light directly with the solar panel. Watch how it turns on and off. Now the ultimate test directly with the solar cell. I'm gonna get some fine steel wool over here and put it on this pad. We connect one end to one pole and touch it with the other pole. We blow on it and it automatically ignites because the tiny strands become incandescent due to the short circuit. And we and with it we can we can light grass on fire or something with it. Believe it or not, but it's only with the solar cell itself. I turn off the fire and we're gonna light it up again, as you can see, just with a small blow, almost automatically. It catches fire and with this we can light things directly on fire with solar light. Truly a marvelous sight. Now we light it up, we add some more twigs as if we were making a normal fire, being careful because there's a lot of wind and it's really dangerous to light it up here. However, we take our precautions. Now we'll, we'll turn it off to ensure everything is safe. We press down the fire just like this. And now with a bit of water we brought, we complete it and we ensure that no residual fat remains that could cause a potential fire. All right, you must have seen the power. Even though we are in the worst uh, time of the year for solar energy, it's just the beginning of winter here in Argentina when there's at least solar radiation. The day we conducted this test to light the grass on fire was the day with the lowest solar radiation. But with a bit of ingenuity on our part, we can even start a fire with a single solar cell. I'll show you how to connect the, the controller to the cell. As you can see, there's no room for error because we have the, the red cable and the black cable, positive and negative, and it's well specified in here that this co goes, or comes rather, from the cell, from the solar panel, and the negative and the positive here. The negative and positive are connected as indicated here. We do the same procedure with the output 
to the battery. Note that we have the negative sign here and the positive sign here. Remember that if you have a light that you want to connect, you can also power it from this other output, negative and positive as well. The only drawback that I see with this is that the, the cables are very short. You know how it is with Oriental products. They always send the minimum to avoid, um, to avoid bulking of the packages. They send the bare minimum. If you want a longer cable, you obviously need to buy it separately and attach a longer cable. But this is how it comes. Therefore, it's quite close for us to connect. Connect it there, and we have the cell connected to the controller. At the moment, the solar, the solar energy received will come here and then go out towards the battery. We shall go outside, and there we will see directly the operation of this cell. Now that we are in full daylight, we're gonna try to turn on that light and turn it on from here. As you can see, it can turn on and we uh, can change the lights, the types of lights. It may not be noticeable on the camera, warmer or cooler, or we can lower the intensity from here as this, uh, this light ring allows it. Now I'll disconnect it from the cell and it will turn off, obviously. Meaning directly from the 5.2 volt output, we can keep a light on. Okay, now let's try to make this GoPro work again, as I already removed the battery, as you can see. And we will connect it directly to the USB output, directly from the cell. As you can see, it turned on, indicating the battery charge. Now let's turn it on as if to start recording. Or at least to put it in recording mode. We unplug it, and it obviously will stop recording. And now we will begin the connection, as it truly must be done, with a solar panel. Connecting the charge controller and starting to charge a battery up. First off, we will see how much voltage our battery has. We turn it on there. We connect the positive and negative terminals of the battery and we will see it has 12.19 volts. It is slightly discharged. Not very much, but low nonetheless. 12.19. Now we will connect uh, both battery clamps that come out of the controller over here. The positive with the positive, the red one with the positive end, and the negative with the black one. We connect them here, and now we connect the the controller to measure voltage. Positive and negative. Okay, here we have 12.2 volts approximately, the battery's exact tension, and now we will connect it to the cell. We plug it directly into the solar panel, and we are going to see that it automatically bumped up straight to 12.4 volts and a battery charging begins. It's 12.5, it's charging now. And here we can see it is 12.28 and rising. So at this moment, the battery is being charged up until it reaches its limit, 13.7, and it is fully charged. The controller is going to ensure that the charge is cut off um, when the battery becomes fully charged, it will cut it off on its own. So we don't have to worry. Throughout the day, the battery will charge gradually. Of course, it's not a lot of amperage. It may reach 800 milliamps or so, depending on solar radiation. In the peak of summer, it might reach 2 amperes, approximately what this cell can, can provide accordingly. But right now, it's in the middle, so we'll see. The voltage is already at 12.62 and the battery is at 12.38 when we started it was 12.19 it is 12.6 it dropped to 12.4 right when we covered it when we uncover it it receives full radiation 
Now let's see how to use the accumulated energy during the day stored in a battery thanks to solar light. We will obtain AC electricity similar to what we have in our very own homes, 220 or 110 volts. In this case it's 200 and, uh, 220 volts and 50 hertz. Here you can see that it has a standard multi-socket so it means you can plug in um, three-pronged polarized plugs like these or the common two-pronged two -pronged plugs or those with three prongs that our electrical devices tend to use. There are three, three lights over here and we also have an USB output so when we connect to a 12 volt battery you'll have a standardized USB port to charge your mobile phone or charge your mobile photo camera, batteries or any, any device with a USB port it will work on this. We can even get the previous light ring working, the one we saw earlier outside, the one we turned on using solar energy. You can power it from here too because it has the same output, the same exact USB port. There's an ignition key here, off and on. And on the other side, a small cooler fan that cools the system when there are many loads happening at the same time, it starts automatically. And it's essential to know that this device works even when the battery is discharged, down to 11 volts only. It continues to provide uh, directly a constant 220 volts, uh, constantly 220 or 224 volts, more or less the output level. Even if the battery is highly charged or slightly charged up to that point, it will deliver a stable voltage in the network. In case the battery suddenly discharges as we already may have consumed all of its charge, when it drops from 11 volts it will automatically stop and, and won't start again until the battery voltage is, is suitable by itself. As this maintains a constant amperage, as the voltage drops over, over here, the amperage also drops. The amperage doesn't drop here, it remains it remains constant, constantly, well it can, when it can maintain it because the battery is too low, it shuts off automatically. It will also shut off if it's overloaded, if it has internal fuses which can spark in case of an emergency. Now, let us do the connections here. It has two prongs over here, the red cable will go over here, the positive terminal of the battery, and uh, also something very important here that you can see here is that it also inside this socket it has a banana plug this can be used to draw 12 volts from the battery for something else if it needs 12 volts you can connect it here it must be well placed and tightened notice that the cables going to the battery now or rather are coming from the battery are thick because when it's working at 220 volts, there's a lot of amperage consumption, which is why the cable is so thick. This is connected already. The next thing we have to do is to make sure that we connect the positive end to the positive end here, which is this one. And here we will connect the negative from the battery to this negative end. Okay, I had this on already, but it can be turned off from here. In case there are any, any, many issues, this red light will turn on. It will be indicating us that it's connected to the battery. And this second light right here tells us the system is already on. So now we have 220 volts over here. As you can see, the cooler doesn't start up because there is no work, no consumption done. There's no need to cool down anything. Now we will test it with, for example, what can we use over here? Here we, we have a drill. This drill uses 250, no, 600 watts, sorry. 600 watts. 600 watts is, to give you an idea, if we connect it right here into the wall socket, this drill will consume less than 3 amperes. So we would only... So with only 3 amperes we can get this drill to work. 
if we ever have to get those watts from this battery to get to get to 600 watts we have only 50 amperes because 50 times 12 the true voltage of the battery will give us the watts plus something the equipment consumes but we will get 50 amperes from here to give you guys an idea this battery has 75 amperes an hour so it can deliver us 75 amperes during an hour in the case of a drill as it consumes 50 amperes it will last us an hour and a half and the full charge of the battery will end it will not last beyond that at all it won't be able to use it all day long that's why when you require solar energy equipment to power to power a home you will need various batteries even those special batteries with those with deep cycles as as these are common common batteries car batteries either case they work the same okay now we shall test the equipment we will begin with a test at 220 volts it is a completely a completely normal drill let's drill a hole and now we are going to connect it to our inverter with the battery we connect it here and we turn it on it is working now and we will use the drill that drill here as we are supposed to As you can see, it works the same as if it were uh, connected to the electrical network. Now we will see how much it consumes from here, from the battery. For this we will use these clamps that are used for continuous current. We set them at 60 amperes and we connect them here. We will see that it has 400 milliamps, which is what the idle device consumes at the moment. And we will start it up once again. I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can. Well, it takes up 15, between 15 and 20 amperes from the battery to make the drill work. We will see, for example, that the light of a car, a low beam or a high beam, just one light, to give us 55 or 60 volts, it will consume five amperes. Both lights are 10 amperes. This drill consumes 20. This would be equivalent to a car having both high and low beams on at the same time, consuming the same as this battery to illuminate and power what this drill consumes. Let us test it. Here we have a, an angle grinder. You know that angle grinders also consume quite a lot of power. Let's see what happens and how much it consumes at the moment, it, it powers up. It consumes, it consumes 35 amperes. This one consumed 19. So this one consumed practically 50% 50 more. 50, 150 watts. Note that when it starts, it stays until the device compensates. It compensates and automatically evens out the voltage, but it compensates automatically. Listen to the startup. It's truly, tr truly wonderful to be able to connect this to the car cigarette lighter or directly with the battery cables to make a drill or an angle grinder work as if it were inside our workshop. This little device, uh, this little device is truly, truly worth it. It's worth having because it's like having the energy from our home wherever wherever we go in the car while it's true that it consumes the battery with the car running we can maintain it for as long for as long as we need remember that this fantastic device without the battery of course can be purchased on the on the bank good uh, website i will leave the link to the website in the video description below take a look 
it's a great piece of equipment if you find it interesting and maybe useful. And now finally, we shall see the type of wave it produces. It's not a pure sine wave, it's a modified sine wave. For this, we have our multimeter. Now, let's see how the wave, how the wave behaves when we connect it. We turn it on here. And you can see that it's not a perfect sine wave. Not perfectly made, it's a modified sine wave. Those inverters that are much more professionals, much higher quality, their sine waves are pure. This is the wave you see when you see a sine wave. It, although it's not a perfect sine wave, the device works very well and its cost-benefit ratio is excellent and it's a good piece of equipment. And we are going to test it with something else that consumes a lot, such as a heater. Let's see how it, how it manages here, because this consumes much more than what we had connected recently. It's 450 watts to also generate around 40 amperes here. As you can see, the cooler fan starts up automatically because the power inverter has to work much, much harder to achieve this level of power. Let's see the level of consumption we have here. Uh, 42 amperes. 42.2. But as you can see, we are turning on a halogen lamp. It's a handy device to take in the car, to take when you go camping, because it allows you to handle something with 220 volts. Before finishing, let's give a shout out to the people who were the first to comment in previous videos. And they are Gabriel Maceo from San Martin, Buenos Aires, and Justi Cardones, also from Buenos Aires. A huge greeting to these two people from El Angelito's channel and from me as well. Well, my friends, remember to subscribe, to give it a thumbs up, and to recommend the channel. All these things help us to stay well positioned on the platform. I hope you like the background and the lighting that we have added to these videos as we are looking to improve a little every single day. In the upper right hand corner of your screens, I'll be leaving you guys links on topics such as wind and energy, solar energy, power generation, everything related to clean energy that we can do by ourselves in our own homes. I'll leave them in a video playlist for you to enjoy for a little while and acquire some more knowledge on this fascinating and beautiful topic of clean energies for our planet. And now you'll have to excuse me because I forgot to record the farewell when the video ended. So now while I'm editing the video, I have to say goodbye. My friends, it will be until we see each other again.